All right, so first thing first, who am I talking to? I, I know I got Lawrence, but who, who am I talking to My right name here? Is, name is Joel. All right, Joel, what's good, man? I, I appreciate you guys reaching out to me. What's going on with you, my man? So well, you, you got questions, you need some advice. What, 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 what are we doing right now, my guy? Man, yes and yes. But no, uh, right. What I'm driving for Swift, and they are paying me. They are paying me a child's allowance, and I'm looking to jump ship. And I, I did a little bit of due diligence, and I didn't hear anything bad about J and R Shugel. And um, I know that I want to uh, wherever I go to, I want to do a lease purchase thing, and. They seem, by by external appearances, they seem to be a good company. And I simply mentioned that to Lawrence and Alakazam, here you are. Well, let me shout out my guy, Lawrence, man. It's, it's, it's been a long time. Me and Lawrence, we've been acquaintances ever since the uh, Zello group all the way back in 2019. Good guy. I never had no problems with him. Whenever we get together for conversations, they they always been enjoyable. So shout out to my man, Absolutely. Lawrence. All right, so let's, well, let's start off with Swift, man. You made a funny about them giving you a child's allowance. Was Swift was was your industrial company, and what about that? Did you go through them for your CDL, or or was they your first company out the gate after you got your CDL? No, I drove uh, I drove CDL before I drove for about seven eight years, uh, but my kids were young. And so I, I gave up my license and I went back home to live a quote unquote normal life. And I was out of the trucking game for probably 10 years. And I just got back into it uh, in November. So recently, I've only been at it for about four months, three or four months. But overall, I've, I've got a little bit of time. Um, but uh, I went through Swift because uh, they they. They had the schooling and the academy, you know, the academy, and they helped you go through without having to uh, come up with a whole lot of a whole lot of money out of pocket. Okay, facts, facts. So you, so you had your CDL before, but you went on ahead and and just gave it up, and then you, you had to go through the yeah, whole process was, all was, over again. Yeah, I was out of it for so long, I had to start all over from scratch, from square one. Okay, and you decided out of all the companies out here that's, that are sponsored, you, you gave Swift the opportunity to, yeah. to help you out in that department. Yeah, because when I, did, when I did my research, they were the only ones that would send you through school. Because uh, this the first time I got my CDL, that's how I did it. I signed up with a company. They sent me through school. Had to do very little out of pocket, and then when I passed the course, I had a job waiting for me. And uh, back in November, when I when I decided to get my CDL back, Swift was the only company I could find that was still doing that. And I and trust me, I spent a lot of time looking for companies, and and nobody was doing that anymore. Okay, I'll give you that that you did your due diligence. How long ago was that when you was doing that to figure out that Swift was still in the game to get you guys your CDLs? This was uh this was October November of last year. So you know three four months ago. All right, now now that you got your CDL, did you have to sign a contract? with swift or did you sign a financial agreement oh, absolutely so i didn't i didn't i didn't sign the contract i just signed saying that uh you know i owe them a certain amount of money for okay. my schooling okay and cool. if i if i drive for them a certain amount of time that debt will be forgiven right right blah 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 but uh, but now you're ready to jump ship because the money ain't there man i was lied to and bamboozled Run amok, led astray. Plymouth Rock didn't, you didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on Landed you. on me. That's right. They lied. Man, that's that's crazy. That's what these mega carriers do. That's what, well, I ain't going to say the mega carriers. I'll, I'll say they're recruiters. That's that's what they do to get you in, hey, into the seat. they don't stop it, so that makes them a part of the issue, sir. They, you say that's part of, they, they part of the problem. They they lie to you. They, they'll tell you anything to get you, to get warm bodies through the door. Exactly, exactly. That is so, so true on many levels. It's 
it's it's kind of like it's kind of like being the hot chick at the club. Everybody wants you. Everybody loves you. Everybody is gonna love you forever if you just go home with them. Okay, 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 okay. I I guess we're not going to get into too much too much detail. You only been driving with them for for a couple of months, and a lot of people knows if if you don't get that right dispatcher or that right fleet manager your your time with the company is going to be kind of on the sour side do you agree with me with that it is well it goes deeper than that it's it's not my dispatcher it's not the driver leader it's it's the company culture so it's not a bad it's not a bad actor this it's the problems are not are not uh are not superficial they're systemic so it goes deeper than my immediate upline. Okay, so do tell the story. Let's go down this rabbit hole. What's what's going on? Left hand doesn't know what. To, well, there's no communication. Uh, when I have issues with anything from my zonar to schedule, like for example, like right right here and now, perfect example. Uh, for the past two weeks, I've been getting this message coming across my zonar. Your unit is scheduled for uh, a preventative maintenance. Your unit is scheduled for preventative maintenance. So it seems to me the prudent thing to, to do would have been to, you know, give me a load, route me near to a terminal, let me drop off my load, let me go in, get my PM done, and then everything's good. But no, they wait until the last minute, and now the computer says, okay, you're on a service hold, you can't get any more loads. So when that happens, then they route me to a nearby terminal and I go in and I talk to the guys at the service desk and they're like, oh, our schedule is full. We won't be able to see you for three days. So now I'm sitting for three days waiting for a service. Then uh, my PM gets done. And by the way, everybody from the ladies in the front office to the guys at the shop, everybody has an attitude. Finally get my truck back uh, yesterday. Let's say yesterday at around five or six o'clock in the evening. But the computer still has me on a service hold. I'm like, you know what? Okay, that's fine. No problem. I'll go to sleep, take a nap. When I wake up, I'll be good. Woke up this morning and I'm like, okay, my PM is done. I'm ready for a load. So they assigned me a load, but now I have no trailer. And so I'm looking at the load and I'm like, okay, uh, this load is a live load. So I need a trailer. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I told my driver leader verbally, and then I sent a message. Then I sent like three messages over to Zonar. I need a trailer solution. I need a trailer solution. I need a trailer solution. And that, start, that whole thing started at about 8 o'clock this morning. Then at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I get a message from one of the planners. Hey, we show your truck isn't moving. You're still standing still. When are you going to start rolling? I said, well, I'll start rolling when I get a trailer solution. Nothing. So I haven't heard anything back. So it's already late in the evening. And so this is just basically another wasted day because nobody nobody does their follow up. And and that this is just a microcosm of what typically goes on at Swift. Not just Swift, my guy. It goes on at all of them at, at the mega carriers. I I had undergone the same situation via US Express, which is now a part of the Swift Knight oh, Swift. family. So yeah, I'm very much aware of the I, I call it trailer hunting. I'll send in over to Qualcomm. I think it was something else back in the day. I can't remember off my top of my head, but I'll send it in, let them know that I need a trailer. And then they'll come back to me here. Try over here. Try over there. Try yeah, over there. Yeah. Try over there. Yeah. Trailer number such and such and such and such is over there. And you go to all these places trailer hunting and it's nothing to be found. And you lose out on a day all because they can't specifically give you a trailer. You They'll probably give you a trailer. But then when you go over to Home Depot, Home Depot will tell you, oh, we need that trailer, so we're not going to give it to you. So I'm I'm well aware right. of that, bro. I'm, I'm very aware of what's going on in that department right there. Uh, three days, four days now after after everything is said and done, are you covered for those four days? If your equipment was in for a PM, you, you should have got shop pay or breakdown pay. We call it layover pay. 
Yeah, I'm getting layover pay, but man, I'm I'm almost embarrassed to tell you what it is. It's only a hundred bucks a day. That's not embarrassing. That's about the average. I have I have an embarrassing average. Okay, okay, okay. With mega carriers, that's to be expected, and I, I and I still feel your feelings about it, man. So you decided to say, let me go ahead and see what's out there because you should not quit. Before, what I'm saying, before you jump ship. So before I got something definitely lined up, right? Right, right. So J and R Shrugel. What what can I say about J and R Shrugel, man? It's been an extreme long time since I've been with the company. There has been several changes with the company since I have left. My time, my time there wasn't as bad because I had a good fleet manager at the time it it just kind of took a left turn at albuquerque because he left and i was stuck with somebody else that i wasn't that i wasn't cool and it was time for me to get up and leave but my my time there i actually haven't had no problems again if you get with a good fleet manager or a good dispatcher that would take care of you your time with the company would be good now we talking about seven, eight years now, bro. I seen throughout the years of the changes that they made, they changed their pay structure now. I, I hear that they paying like 60 cent a mile or something like that. I hear that they changed their leasing structure because their lease wasn't like lease to own or lease to purchase. It was it was like lease direct. Like a rental. Yeah. Almost like a rental. Yeah, like a rental. You you rent their trucks to make money in their trucks so that you could get more money out of them. So at the time, their lease was maybe a dollar nine a mile with fuel discounts and all like that. I don't think that you had to pay for the truck. I don't think that you had to pay for the truck or something like that. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But but that was that at the time. Now, fast forward to 2024 and what they're offering as far as leasing goes, I honestly can't tell you because I honestly don't know. But from following them on a company standpoint, yeah, like I said, I've seen a whole lot of changes. Yep. They, they, they modernize their trucks. Fast forward to where we are now, JNR Shrugel made a whole lot of modernization from what they was before. So as far as a company goes, I from what I've seen, I, I don't think that you will have any issues. I, you probably might like it. They still got KWs, T680s there. Wow. They are a refrigerated company. So majority of your loads will be from companies like Kraft, Walmart, Walgreens, and stuff like that. So it's all refrigerated freight that you will be taking. So... Plus, it's also a regional. So you either Midwest regional, Southwest regional, Northeast regional, depending on the area that you choose to, to rock out with. Again, home weekly, probably, depending on where you work, where you'll work out of. So not, if you asking me if they're a good company, for me, there was. I, I can't tell you how they are now, but for me, it was a good company. Are you an owner? Op? No, I'm a, I'm company driver. I've been company driver for the last nine years, bro. Since I've been driving, I only been with like maybe four companies. U.S. Express, Wooster Motorways, J&R Schwugel. I rocked out with a, with a black ops company for for a little bit, and now I'm at the current yeah, at the current yeah, company where I'm at right now. So. Would you, would you ever consider going owner op or is there some reason you haven't so far? If uh, I may ask. I, I, I tried my hand at leasing. As a matter of fact, I did it with the, uh, with the black ops company that I, that I rocked out with for that little bit. I'm not a fan of leasing and I'll tell you why. For me, for me, it's, it's, it's not for me. Leasing, it, leasing is just not for me. I, I just feel that. I, I found a good company that that gave me a good CPM that 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 I'm close to making lease op money. So yeah, that's you 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 you're close to making the money, but with a whole lot less risk. Yeah, 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 exactly, 
Exactly. I got you. But don't get me wrong. I, I'm not going to put down lease at one point or another. I used to. I used to tell people all the time, like, yo, I, I wouldn't do leasing, yada, 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 this, that, and the third. But with leasing, man, if you're going to lease, just realize that leasing comes with a whole bunch of responsibilities. Number one, you got to do your own taxes. Number two, you got to find your own benefits and all like that. So with leasing, to me, I, I think if you're going to lease, get in, make your money, save your money, and then get back out, take that experience that you learned from leasing and put it into you going to buying your own truck. I lost you. Go ahead. Put it in. Take that experience you got from leasing and put it in what? Put it in into buying your own truck. That's that's my that's my mindset of it. That makes sense. From every everybody that I talked to, everybody that I heard, everybody that I seen that tried to do some lease. With leasing, again, I wouldn't go the route of the super egos. I wouldn't go the route of company offering 88%. I wouldn't go the route that says lease purchase and all like that. I would just go the route as far as leasing goes. I would go that route, stay in it for a little bit, maybe a year, year and a half, save up your money, learn what you can learn while you lease it, and then take what you learned from that and go and find your own truck with the money that you saved up. Okay. That's so, so, that's so my thought. The super, the super ego type. Uh, companies because they they are they are one of the companies that was on my radar list what's what's wrong with them i'm not going to tell you what to do not going to not going to sway you away or anything like that what i'm going to tell you about super ego is to do your due diligence bro there is a whole lot of videos including my channel that got drivers talking about super ego and their experience there's Facebook groups. There's Facebook groups like Super Ego Elite Drivers that you can join, Super Ego Scams that you can join, Super Ego Group directly from them. You can join and listen and read the reviews, listen to some of the drivers and what they got to say about their time at Super Ego and, and just take all of that, uh, what you have learned, and make your decision from there, man, because there's still people that's giving Super Ego the benefit of the doubt. And as soon as they get into it, it either works for them or it don't. That's okay. basically what I I would say about Super Ego. I, I'm not going to say don't go, do that's go, a good point. That's a good point. or anything like that. Just just go, just do your due diligence, just read the reviews, just read the 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 comments that the drivers that that been there's maybe you'll run into a couple of drivers that had success there some drivers that didn't have success and just assess everything that you accumulated from them and make your decision that way and then get gotcha. back and then get back at me six months later bro ah. there's a deviousness behind the smile <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. I got you. No problem. All right, man. So again, if 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 JNR Swoogle is offering what you're looking for, and it's a company that you want to try, I I I think JNR Swoogle is a good company. When I was there, I I don't know how it is now. Actually, I haven't I haven't heard anything bad about it. I I haven't heard no negative no negativity out out of them since since I left. Maybe one or two people, but there's really not too many people that's complaining about their time there or even if they was there they're not saying anything bad about the company so if if that's any constitution right there for you maybe you can right. give them a try on that on that strip sounds good sounds good all right all right so well, man so, I, I appreciate your time sir hey i i appreciate you calling shout out to lawrence for bringing us together shout out to jnr shrugel in minnesota because that's what i'm heading to right now big cheese got it locked what? What you